Hey guys, uh, welcome to this tutorial video on uh, the Lightwork Mapper. So we're going to review some, uh, some basic functionality in this video and show you around and how everything works and uh, why this is useful. So we'll start by uh, running our sketch. Uh, so this is the main application here. Uh, it's fully open source. You can edit the source code uh, as you like and fully customize this uh, like you want. So. Uh, uh, you start with uh, a blank view here, um, so you need to start by picking your camera. Uh, I have a couple of cameras connected now, I believe this one is the one that I want. Um, so this camera is pointing at our LED installation, so each one of those little dots here is an LED. Uh, problem is that it's not mapped currently, so if you want to put a consistent animation on this or, or any have any control over the content, then uh, we're going to have to produce a map. So um, in order for this to work, you need to have one of these two LED drivers uh, connected and uh, you should have been, you should be able to put some content on the LEDs um, at this point. Otherwise, uh, you're not going to have a good time. So currently we're using a fade candy. Uh, you can also use pixel pusher. Um, Currently, we're planning on extending this uh, to other controllers, um, and we're open to pull requests. So, uh, Fake Candy is currently on our local network. Um, you will probably be running this on your local machine. Um, so, this IP address would be uh, 127.0.0.1, otherwise known as localhost. Uh, but if you're running it on the network, uh, just make sure you, you note the address and, uh, and put it in here. Um, you can set how many LEDs you have per strip, and uh, it's necessary to know that beforehand uh, for the mapper to work properly, and also how many strips you have. Um, so we're going to connect to the fade candy right here. Um, and uh, it looks like we are connected. And uh, so we have a number of other controls here. So if we look at this section here, this has to do with uh, the computer vision processing algorithm. Um, so you can set the contrast and uh, the threshold, and uh, then you can adjust the LED brightness. Um, so let's uh, start the calibration process, which actually starts lighting up some LEDs and shows you the computer vision output here on the right hand side. So if you adjust the brightness here, you can see that um, if you have them set to uh, uh, a brightness that is relatively high, you can see the glow around the LEDs and you can also see how these uh, areas here, they start to blend together and you really don't want that. What you want is you want to take down the LED brightness uh, so that you can barely see uh, each LED here on, on this side and so that on the right hand side you can, you can see clear uh, uh, points where the, uh, where the LEDs are showing up. Uh, you can play with the contrast and uh, with the threshold to sort of fine tune this. But uh, for now, I think this looks pretty good. So we're going to stop the calibration and we are going to start the mapping. Uh, when I start the mapping, it, it captures an image sequence that we show you here underneath. Um, this sequence shows you, um, it shows you every frame of a binary animation. So each LED has a binary pattern that is blinking and it is unique. And that's the pattern that we are recognizing um, in this program to generate the layout. So uh, we see here uh, highlighted in red every successfully mapped LED. So this looks like it is all of them. And uh, so all we have to do now is we need to uh, save the layout. And uh, so we save this to our Lightwork Scraper, which is another processing sketch which lets you uh, use this map to put interesting content on it. So let's uh, clear this and uh, let's go find our scraper. So this is our scraper software right here. 
And what this does is it loads the map that we generated and uh, allows you to put content on it. So right now we're just rolling over this and, uh, and we're showing you the output here on the uh, other sketch. Um, so that's pretty much it. There's a couple of other controls that may or may not be useful to you. Um, so the way this works is there's, there's no sync uh, uh, between the, the camera and the software. So you need to make sure that each frame of the animation uh, lasts long enough so that we can capture uh, each of those frames with the camera. So you can adjust the frame skip here. Um, 30 frames uh, will give you uh, about a one second delay on each pattern, uh, since we're running this at 30 frames per second. Uh, then you can adjust the uh, minimum and the maximum blob size. So th that's um, the acceptable limits for the size of this these uh, blobs. So you can see if I uh, if I adjust this. I wave my hand in front of this, it's going to create some big blobs around here. Um, and this is really useful for uh, eliminating uh, noise that's going on in the background or uh, things like that. Um, and then you can also set the uh, minimum blob distance. So let's clear this for a sec here. Um, so the minimum blob distance is basically what it says. Um, it makes sure that you don't get overlapping blobs or that one single LED is interpreted as, as two blobs, um, etc. Um, so I'm not going to cover the stereo mapping in this video. That will be a separate video. Um, but we are working on a depth mapping procedure. So you could toggle this and you can uh, uh, produce a depth map of your LED if you have a three-dimensional three installation. Uh, thanks very much for watching this video. I hope it's been informative to you guys and uh, I hope you can enjoy using the Lightware Mapper and create awesome installations. Uh, please send us uh, uh, please send us uh, a comment if, uh, if you do and we'd love to see what you're up to. Uh, if you're having issues you can uh, you can contact us and hopefully we'll be able to help you out. Thank you very much.